Wow. Our video about the AI South Park turned out to become the most hated on the channel. We have been accused of fear-mongering, stoking anxiety, and apparently I am just another leech scrambling for the wannabe screenwriter's wallet. There it is. He saw right through me. But wait, before you block us, please note that I am preparing a video that will explain the third question of David Mamet and why you should include the inciting incident in your log lines. You could, of course, also subscribe to the channel so you find out when that video goes live. And now, without further ado, I give you Orange Fed. AI is a brainstorming genius. AI is the hands down the best brainstorming tool ever invented. The backpack we all carry with us, AI has a backpack the size of the universe. You can't compete with that. I mean, it can churn out ideas like, like, Crazy. Right now, the way I'm using it is mostly as an idea generator. And whenever I give it, you know, very specific things that I'm saying, okay, this character is like that. And, and she's having, this is her needs. This is her wants. Based on that and based on the fact that she lost her father or whatever, how would you think she would respond in this situation? And then give give it like you know uh, a paragraph that explains what happened. When I'm very very specific, it'll give decent results. This is where we're where we're at right now. The next stage is going to be a, a lot more automated, and I'm seeing this like a year down the road max. I'll be able in a year. I'm sure I'll be able to have this some kind of AI tool, and I'll tell it. I want to read a vampire thriller set in outer space and I, I wanted to have enemies become lovers and I wanted to have a twist ending and I wanted to, I, I don't know, be a, like 90,000 uh, word long. And I'll hit generate and it'll generate it. That'll be the next stage and that will also mean that that's like in novels and books that scripts will be generated like that. The next part of it will be that, okay, now, now producers will be able to just ask the AI, okay, you have all this data and it'll become much, much better at prediction and market predictions. And it'll just ask, they'll just ask it, okay, what? What's our next movie? From a producer standpoint, I want to make money. If I want to make money now, what will make me the, the most amount of money for the, the lowest investment? And it'll say, okay, this is what you have to do. And the producer will say, sounds great. Write it for me. And it'll write it for it. I, I'm seeing this as, as the next level. Uh, again, like a year, maybe two down the road. I'm not sure, I, I can't tell you how great it will be. I don't think it will be that great. I think we'll enter the, this ocean of mediocrity. Because again, like I said before, it's a great equalizer and the part where we are all get equalized too will be pretty low. There'll be a stage where it'll be really mediocre that it'll start getting better. The next stage will be, okay, before we talked about the producer who wants to create a, a, you know, a blockbuster hit or a publishing house who wants to write a bestseller. Uh, it'll be the same thing. It'll be write me a bestseller. What will be the bestseller? And then write it for me. The next level after that is just when we just say, okay, we don't need bestsellers anymore. We don't need blockbuster hit movies anymore. All we need is this tool. And this tool will, again, me as a consumer, if I want a vampire thriller, okay, it'll create a vampire thriller. But the next stage will, it will be that it'll know so much. It'll have so, so much data about what I want and what I love and what I enjoy that when I ask it to do it, it'll create just the perfect Owen Schwed uh, uh, novel, the perfect novel for Owen Schwed that he will enjoy thoroughly. And it doesn't even, it, it really doesn't matter if you will like it or anyone else will like it. It 
means nothing because it'll take, you know, it'll take a second to create. First, obviously, a, a, a book will be, it'll take like, again, a few seconds or a minute to create, but eventually we'll get to the point where I tell it just like the, the example with, with the South Park. I'll tell it, okay, make an episode, make an episode that, uh, that I want to see. And it really doesn't matter if anyone else wants to see it or not. It's just, it's, it's made for me. It doesn't matter. It, we don't need to have bestsellers anymore. After that, and we're talking, I, I mean, like uh, five years plus down the road. I'm thinking that the entire viewing experience will probably change in some way. Because the way I see it, AI is making such a huge impact in so many, so many different industries like gaming, which is the industry that I, I, I came from. I did like this experiment uh, a few months ago. I took, uh, I took shots from uh, Danny Kubrick's The Shining. And what I did was I took shots and then I changed the shot to become vertical. Actually, what I did, the, the middle part stayed the same. And I actually used uh, generative AI to tell it, okay, now fill in this part and fill in this part. And now you have a vertical frame. It's totally different experience. And then I thought, okay, that's, that's awesome. It's a vertical frame and it looks really cool. I know it's, it's blasphemous because, you know, it's, it's Stanley Kubrick and it's The Shining and it's a masterpiece. But it was, again, it was just an, ex an experiment. Time, I thought of it just the two of us that had the shine to us. Just like you probably thought you was the only one. But there are other folks, though mostly they don't know it or don't believe it. How long have you been able to do it? And then I thought, if I wanted to, I could take this vertical frame and just have AI generative fill, fill in that whole 360 dome. You'll have this frame and you'll be able to, to tell it, okay, generate this whole VR environment for it. And you'll be able to just, you know, be inside the Overlook Hotel and look around all the creepy rooms and the story will go in this direction. But maybe if I'll go into this room, the story will go in another direction. I don't know. I'm really feeling like somewhere down the road, there'll be more and more ex experimentations about the way we tell stories and the way we take in stories and the way we experience them. That's, that's the way I see it. It sounds like over time the screenwriter as we know will entirely disappear from the commercial workflow and it and will gradually shift towards this artistic outer limbs of our culture i'd say that if this you know tens of thousands of jobs for writers today i think you probably count them on the few hands in the future i yeah i completely agree completely agree i, I hate to say it but I completely agree. I really enjoy writing and I don't think I'll stop writing, but there's also the, this very clear distinction that needs to be made between, first of all, do I do it just for fun or is it commercial? Is it art or is it a product? This makes a huge difference in that aspect. It'll be like what we said, it'll be more like directing. It'll be more and more just you telling it, okay, this is good, this isn't good, and and telling it, okay, th this is what you need to make it better. Mm. And if we want to continue being rewarded for our artistic endeavors, we need to be innovative, we need to stay on top of our game, and we may have to go one step further than just putting words on the page. We, we said before, it, I, I'll be able to just, you know, type in a prompt and maybe I'll, maybe I'm really good at that. Maybe I'm, I'm a really good at, at, you know, just figuring out just how to make this AI churn out really impressive stuff and stuff that people will like. I have, I have a ton of negative things to say about social media, 
but we're still social creatures. We still like, you know, to, to experience things together and talk, to talk about them. Well, maybe I'll be like, you know, I'm really good at that. And I know that Karel likes, like the things that I do. I'll, I'll, you know, I'll prompt something and, and just generate something and then I'll send it to you and then it'll get shared. And then it'll, it'll be a, like a different economy. Like, like, you know, like YouTube is as a, as you know, as a social network. How long do you think before we'll watch the first commercial feature film entirely AI generated? Commercial film, not feature length. You're talking about commercial. You're talking about, right? You're talking about the movie that's in theaters and yeah. people are paying money to see. It's further down the road than a lot of people think because it's really easy to see Sora and get super impressed and say, whoa, whoa, this is amazing. This is one minute of, of you know, a film. And we can just do like 90 of these and, and have a full feature film. But we're not there yet. I, I'm thinking that we're just, we're really hyped right now on how it looks. But if we just, you know, took it into a more objective point of view and look at it and say, okay, but is it? good enough to be an actual movie no it's not good enough to be an actual movie it's really weird it's still really weird at some point and audiences can't really they won't buy a ticket to see 90 minutes of kind of normal video that just goes every couple of seconds and we are very very sensitive with faces humans from birth are super sensitive to recognize and understand faces. And even if just the slightest thing is off, we're in this uncanny valley like we had with, when Polar Express came out and Beowulf. The, the humans looked like zombies. I'm a huge believer in the 80-20 rule. 20% of the time to get to 80% of the result. But now to get to the, the other to get through the other 20% of, of the quality that we need, it'll take 80% of the time. Yeah. That's why I think we still have a way to go. Let's look forward to, with optimism and, and yeah. participate for as long as we can. And I think, you know, you've given us a real, a real good insights and, and it's great how you're engaging with these new technologies. I'll certainly keep an eye on it. Now, you are also available for advice and consultation for people who are interested yeah. who are considering ventures that involve AI. Can you maybe pitch your, your business? Obviously, I do a lot of AI work, AI generated work, images, videos, whatever needed. And like you said, consultations and, and automations, and I do workshops and I do, I have a few lectures on the future of AI. ChatGPT and every kind of, of generative model and uh, also obviously uh, workshops on generative images and video. And that's it. I hope you got more out of this video than just fear, anxiety and annoyance. But true to my character, I won't leave you without scrambling for your wannabe screenwriter's wallet. If you choose to do so, you can support us by subscribing to the channel, give us a super thanks or checking out the training courses I designed for my experience working in this industry for nearly 40 years on both sides of the fence as a producer and film buyer, but also as a screenwriter. Happy watching, happy writing. Cheers.